Let me paint you a picture of two young professionals, Sara and Jack. These days, they are working from home, like many of us, and they know they are the lucky ones. After all, they're still in a job. But Jack's experiences of working from home is very different from Sara. Yes, Jack sits on back-to-back -back Zoom calls all day, just like Sara. And yes, Jack misses the social side of office life, just like Sara does. But since the pandemic struck, Sarah's been holding down a second job. She's looking after two young children who are home from school. So, as well as the nine to five Zoom calls, Sarah is also a full-time provider of education, attention, meals, and care. Jack may also experience some of it for sure. But for Sarah, as we all know, like for many women, it's the second full-time job. And the pressure of the situation has forced millions of women, just like Sarah, to leave the workplace altogether. I'm Diego Gomez. And I am Marina Tavares. And we are here to explain how the COVID-19 crisis has led in many countries to a she session. To research the impact of this economic crisis that has affected women's employment more than men, we focused on the United States. The U.S. provides public and monthly microdata, which allowed us to track what was happening to the labor market in real time. One of the first things we discovered reinforced what many people have noted that mothers with kids under age 12 suffer, and they suffer a lot much more than fathers and other women in the economy. And it's not just a reduction of paid hours. Many lost or quit their job. In other words, a major factor underpinning the she session in the United States was young children, and the numbers tell the story. So pre-pandemic, the overall U.S. workforce split along the gender line like this. 69% of men participate in the labor force, while 57% of women did. And of women at work, only 25% were mothers of young children. Now, let's look at what happens as the pandemic hits. Employment starts to go down faster for women than for men, and consequently, the difference between the number of men and women in work, the gender employment gap, alarmingly starts to widen. And it widens much more for parents of young children. And as we look further into the numbers, we found a remarkable fact. Despite women with young children be a small share of the labor force at the start of the pandemic, they accounted for more than 40% of the increase in the employment gender gap. Another alarming finding is that many of the women who lost their jobs have lower education levels, suggesting that the poor are hit the most the ones who have less training and ability to reinvent themselves to find a job in a world that may be different from now on. And this comes with a huge economic cost. We estimate that the cost that the U.S. economy lost close to 0.4% of GDP between April and November, because mothers of young children so dramatically reduced their employment. To put into the context, this is more than half trillion of dollars. To put it bluntly, if women do not go back to the labor force to the same levels that we had before the pandemic, we won't have a full economic recovery. Something that will not only have a huge long-term impact on a woman's career, but will also have a major societal impact, as fewer corporations end up having women in positions of leadership, leading to a loss of role models and inspiration to young women. Our labor force will also lose in diversity and capability, leading to permanent productivity losses. The analysis was conducted for the United States, but the situation is very similar in many countries. Economies cannot fully recover unless women can participate fully. This call for action. Action to support women with financial schemes, training and investment in child care and safe measures for school reopening. Unfair and unequal as it is, the she session may at least be short-lived with the right policies in place. Mm -hmm.